I sometimes sit there and look out and then think, you know, about the people outside as well as us inside, you know, and say to myself, I wonder what they really think of us. The public probably frightened of us, and they probably think we're dangerous. It's sad, really. Some of us are not half as mental as, uh, as we're supposed to be. And we can take the mickey out of ourselves. Good, Abby. Good to you. Going bloody bad, are you? You get visitors drive up to the front of the hospital and take one look and drive back out again. After all said and done, this place is not everybody's cup of tea. St Lawrence's Hospital, Surrey. The Victorians call this place the South London Asylum. And here, in 1871, they sent their inadequates. The idiots, the imbeciles, the feeble-minded, and the mental and moral defectives. All the human wreckage of a newly industrialised society. Rural communities could cope with their casualties. The idiot was an accepted part of village life. But once the families moved into the towns and cities, these people could no longer be looked after, supervised or taught at home. And factory life required speed, discipline, enforced timekeeping. Some people simply couldn't cope. Soon this hospital was packed with over 2,000 mentally handicapped people. The people who live here don't get many visitors, a few volunteers and relatives at weekends, although it's done rather better this year. As it's International Year for Disabled People, Blue Peter's been here, a few journalists and ourselves. Hello. How are you? I suppose there's one thing that makes us different, and it's not just that some of us have ended up here by mistake, but most people here are really mentally handicapped. Not mentally ill, but mentally handicapped. A lot of the poor souls don't know their money, don't know how to read, don't know how to write. So you see, you've got lots of things to be thankful for. Bob Saunders was admitted to this hospital at the age of five. He's lived here for the last 36 years. Each day is the same as another day, you know, I mean, nothing really changes. Your life just drifts by. to 50 years and they seem to do the same job day in day out. They don't seem to change if you know what I mean. We look at each other and watch each other get old. Some people were a bit stroppy when they first came. But they settled down in the end.
after a little bit of treatment. But I've often wondered why, why they put you in and just ignore you like... Just honestly, we're being put away. is colossal there. You notice it, especially if you go to the kitchens and laundries. It's colossal. They get through 13 tonnes of laundry a day. That's over 60 tonnes a week. Just imagine all those nurses, all those therapists, all those cleaners and porters, cooks and engineers, and finally, all those residents. You've got to have a routine because of the size of the place. But it's too big to run any other way. For the 1,300 residents of St. Lawrence's Hospital, the routine starts at 6.30 every morning. Block D, two-thirds of the way down the corridor that houses the 650 male patients of the hospital, contains one of its high dependency wards. Of the 35 people who live here, 20 are virtually helpless. So the more able-bodied patients spend some of their time acting as unpaid nurses. Whoa. Just put his vest on, there, and then we'll put these little things on. Bill! Bill! We're getting Bill down, the old boy. He put his boots on. Initially, this all started because they were pairs of hands. You just had so many patients to feed. We had 19 to feed and three staff. But sheer numbers made this impossible. Thank you, sis. Jean Williams qualified as a nurse three years ago after bringing up her family. And for the last 12 months, she's been a sister on this ward. To the outside world, it must seem very strange to see patient looking after patient and helping each other. Have you given him a kiss today? And it's very strange to see. It's probably like two brothers at home, if you like. But then they do build up relationships. I think this is all they've got, some of them. Their baby or their boy. No, not in, not in, not in, not in, not in, there, 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 no. They've got no family, no relatives, never have any visitors. So I think they cling to, to someone. I remember Billy he had another boy before that died. I think to fill the gap, he took over Jeffrey. He's looked after him about 10 years, and possibly his boy before that, another 10 years. Um, he's always had someone to look after. I don't know what you'd do with Bill if you took his babies away from him. Because that's all he's got. It's very sad, but it's a reality. I'll be a trap, I'll be a trap. I'll be a trap. 